Hey guys, welcome back, and man, it feels good to say those words again. It has been about two and a half weeks since I have sat down and recorded a video. All the videos that have uploaded have been pre-recorded. So, for those of you that are new to the channel, everything you see behind me is brand new. This is a brand new setup. I have moved cross-country to attend college. It has been, let me tell you, this has been the hardest video for me to record that I've ever had to do. The plan was initially to have LED lights back here. We weren't able to get those in time. They will be coming. So I sat down to record this video, and then I sat down. I tried to plug up my microphone, and it didn't work. I had to go buy a whole new microphone. That This is the first test with the new mic. So this is all very new to me, very uh, new setup. Hope you guys like this. This is where all the videos will be recorded from here on out. So, hope you guys do enjoy, but today we're going to do my favorite video of every year, and that is my Super Bowl predictions. Now, if you guys see the records, these are from my team preview videos. So, for those of you that have been watching the videos, I did a team preview for all 32 NFL teams in the league. If you guys want to see what I had to say about your favorite team, uh, hit the link down in the description. I'll leave the playlist down there. You guys can go see a little bit of more reasons why I like or dislike each team. Um, some of these have changed. For example, I have bumped the Falcons up. The Packers have jumped up. Um, little moves like that, mostly in the NFC, I don't really think. Steelers have jumped up in the AFC for sure. Patriots have dropped down a bit. So nothing too crazy here, but we're going to go through my playoff matchups that I have, um, and we're going to crown a champion this year. Did my award picks. This is the final video really before the season. I'm going to do a buy-sell preseason edition. That's going to come out probably tomorrow, um, so I'm really excited. But let's go ahead and get into these matchups. and Let's start in the NFC. Let's switch it up a little bit, and let's start off with the 49ers and the Saints. So, I'm really in on Seattle this year. I think Seattle is going to win the division this season. I think they have a quarterback who I like. I like Brock Purdy coming off a of UCL tear. Does scare me a little bit. And this is a team that has their tackles who are young. They are going to take that second step up this year, as well as a good receiving core and a really boosted defense. So that's why I have Seattle winning the division. Uh, and San Francisco plays the Saints I think San Francisco is going to win. They are going to be one of the best wild card teams we've had in a long time. This Usually, we're used to seeing the Niners win the division. Uh, one of my close friends, who is a Niners fan, I know he's really in on Seattle this year as well. I think Seattle's a really fun team, and I've got... The, but we talk about the Niners. Sorry, I'm talking about Seattle, getting ahead of myself. Let's talk about this matchup here between the Niners and the Saints. The Niners' defense is still one of the top units in the league. They lost Jimmy Ward, which is a pretty big one, but I still like this Niners' defense. Uh, their offensive line, where they lost their right tackle, still pretty solid. And if this team can stay healthy, they are a contender in the NFC, no doubt. The Saints, yeah, they added Derek Carr. Then a pretty weak division. I gave them an extra win. I think they boosted it up to 10-7. and seven. I actually was a big fan of what I saw Derek Carr do in preseason. I think A.T. Perry is going to be an absolute stud. But I don't think they have the manpower to match up with the 49ers. This team is too electric. The defensive line last year really struggled to create pressure. And against a really good offensive line, you got to be able to create some type of pressure on the quarterback. And for those reasons, I'm going to take the Niners to get the win and advance to the divisional round. And then we got the Cowboys and the Seahawks. This would be a really fun matchup. Um, the Cowboys are notorious for making it to the divisional round and not going any further than that. And this Seattle team, which is a weird mixture of veterans and young guys. Bobby Wagner's coming back to the Niners. They added Draymond Jones, which is the most underrated pickup, in my opinion, of the offseason. You add Devon Witherspoon to a pretty solid cornerback unit as well. You add Jackson Smith and Jigba to this receiving core. You gave Geno Smith a pretty hefty contract extension, and he earned it. He was a top 10 quarterback last year. I think he's going to repeat that again this year. So what do I think of this one? I think it's going to come down to the line play. And I think both lines are really, really good. Um, and who has more playmakers? I think, you know, obviously, who's going to put points on the board? And I think it's Seattle. I think Seattle has 
between Kenneth Walker, who is right behind me here, between Kenneth Walker and DK Metcalf, Tyler Lockett, Jackson Smith and Jigba, Zach Charbonnet could be a piece for this team. They have too many pieces, and I do like what Dallas did this offseason. I think they are a year away. Still, I think they're missing some stuff. Um, the run defense, Mozzie Smith was their first-round pick. He has not looked good in the preseason. I'm taking both NFC West teams to advance the divisional round. And then we got the Vikings and the Lions. Now, yeah, I boosted the Vikings into the playoffs over the Giants. I think we look at the divisions and the schedule. The Vikings have the more favorable matchups. They have Brian Flores coming in as the defensive coordinator. They made some moves on the defensive side of the ball, which was desperately needed. Adding Marcus Davenport, adding Byron Murphy. Maybe Makai Blackman can be a piece for this team. Detroit, on the other hand, they really boosted this defense. You added C.J. Gardner-Johnson, Emmanuel Mosley, Cam Sutton, Brian Branch. This team really boosted defensively. And offensively, this team has weapons. Amonra St. Brown is a top 10 receiver. You've got Jamison Williams, who once he comes back from his suspension, hopefully he can be a piece here. Um, you drafted Sam Laporta. You drafted Jameer Gibbs. And I'm really high on Jared Goff. It says the Lions are the second best team in the NFC. I do think they go 11-6 and six this year. Um, but if we're looking at records, they're probably about fourth or fifth. I think the Lions are going to get their first playoff win since the Kennedy administration. Or I think it's the 90s. But Kennedy has only missed one of the Lions' playoff wins. I think they're going to do it. I'm really high on Detroit this year. I think they're well-coached. I think Jared Goff is a really good quarterback. You've got one of the best offensive lines in football. There's really nothing holding this team back other than the fact that they're Detroit. So I'm buying into the hype with the Lions this year. I think they advance to the divisional round. We move over to the AFC side of things, which is, if we're being honest, the more exciting side of things. And we start off with a rematch of last year's wildcard game between Jacksonville and L.A., Jacksonville is a better team this year than they were last year. This team was really slow the first half, boosted it up in the second half, ended up making a run to the divisional round. This year, they add Calvin Ridley. They add Anton Harrison. They made some moves here. Trayvon Walker, who was a really raw first overall pick, should be coming into his own year too. I think Jacksonville's a really good team. And Brandon Staley is still the coach for the Chargers. As good as Justin Herbert is, the line has not been able to stay healthy. Yes, they've got so many weapons there. There's some question marks I have with that team, and I think that Jacksonville has really built themselves a good squad. Josh Allen, if he can have a pretty solid season, Trayvon Walker, if he can jump up and they can generate some pass rush, which was a weakness for this team last year, I think they are a dark horse team to go all the way. I've got Jacksonville winning the first game here in the AFC against the Chargers. Oh, this would be must-see TV between the Bills and the Jets. It's the week one Monday night opener um, between the Bills and the Jets. And we would get that in the wild card if it pans out the way that I have it. And we look at these teams. And to me, I think the winner is kind of, I mean, this is close, but I, I'm really, really high on the Jets this year. Um, I think this Jets team defensively were absolutely incredible last year. And I frowned the Will McDonald pick and watching him in preseason. Yes, it's preseason. His get off the line is so fast. I, I think that's going to be a real problem. Jermaine Johnson is a solid piece. They've got pass rushers. They've got an interior. They've got a secondary. This defense is stout. And oh yeah, you just added Aaron Rodgers to an offense with Garrett Wilson, who I think is going to leap into superstardom this year. I think he's going to be off the charts good. You've got Brees Hall and Dalvin Cook and Randall Cobb, Nicole Hardman. They have so many weapons here. And we look at the Bills. They have Sean McDermott, who is going to be calling the defensive plays this year. I think they're going to be bringing heavy pressure. you got Von Miller back healthy. You've got pieces there. And it really is going to come down to Josh Allen's decision-making, which lost him in the playoffs last year. His decision-making was very poor, and I don't really love all the weapons there in Buffalo. I love Stephon Diggs. Gabe Davis did not take that leap I wanted to see last season. We'll see what Dalton Kincaid can be for this team. I have the Bills losing to the Jets here, and I, I think the Jets are going to advance to the divisional round. And then we get the Dolphins and the Chiefs. So these two teams match up this year in Germany which is going to be Tyreek Hill's first game against the Chiefs. 
This would be his first game back at Arrowhead in the playoffs. Dolphins at 10 and 7 uh, is my record for them. This team could go 13 and 4 and win the AFC if Tua can stay healthy. This team is one of the more electric offenses I can remember seeing. At the time of recording this, they haven't added Jonathan Taylor. As a Colts fan, I'm expecting them to add Jonathan Taylor to this already electric offense. You've got Tua. You've got Tyree Kill and Jalen Waddle, who are an incredible one-two punch at receiver. And defensively, you add Vic Fangio. And Vic Fangio, in my opinion, is the best defensive play call in football. He has built incredible defenses year after year. You went out and you got Jalen Ramsey and Cam Smith, who was one of my guys this year. You have Kader Kahu, who's pretty solid. You have uh, Xavier Howard. Javon Holland is really good. Christian Wilkins. Like This team is really balanced on both sides. And where do we have question marks? It is the offensive line with this team. And then you're taking on the Kansas City Chiefs. That is a matchup nightmare for anyone just because you got to play Patrick Mahomes. And I'm really not going to bet against Patrick Mahomes in the wild card round. I can't. As much as I like this Dolphins team, and honestly, on paper, I think these teams are pretty well matched. Obviously, you've got the quarterback advantage. I'm taking the Dolphins receiving core. I'm taking the Dolphins running back room with or without Jonathan Taylor. I'm taking the Chiefs tight end. Offensive line goes to the Chiefs. And defense, I think that's for the Dolphins, especially if Chris Jones doesn't come back and play for the Chiefs. It'll be interesting to see. I don't think the Chiefs can win a Super Bowl without Chris Jones. Um, But for the sake of this, it's Patrick Mahomes. It's Travis Kelsey. I think Justin Ross is going to play a massive role for this team this year. It'd be a really, really good weapon. I think the Chiefs win this game. And they're going to have an interesting matchup here. Coming up in the wild card round, or in the divisional round, excuse me, where now we have matchups. So the first round buys come into play here. Cincinnati Bengals winning the AFC. The Philadelphia Eagles winning the NFC with the best regular season records. Let's start off in the AFC right away. We get Rodgers versus Mahomes, which is no longer the State Farm Bowl because Aaron Rodgers has left State Farm. This matchup would be incredible. Mahomes and Rodgers. This would be very similar to the Super Bowl, Brady and Mahomes. Very different, um, similar in the fact that they're two legends going up against Mahomes, but it's not the Super Bowl. I talked about it. I love this Jet squad. Defensively, I think they have the personnel to match up with any team in the league. It doesn't really matter which weapons you put out there. I think this team has it. The defensive line is really good. and I think Aaron Rodgers has got a lot to prove. I think he's going to be great this year. We look at the Chiefs. Are they going to be able to generate pressure? Without Chris Jones, we don't know. He says he's willing to hold out till week eight. The Chiefs are notoriously cheap. I would not be surprised to see Chris Jones in another uniform. You look at this, George Karloftis would have to take a jump. You need a lot from Felix on Adike Uzama. This is a pretty weak Jets offensive line. This game would be very well matched. I think the weapons are pretty even across the board, but... I think this is it. I think the Jets are going to go to the AFC Championship game. Call me biased all you want. I'm not a Jets fan. I do really like this team. And I really like Mahomes too. I think this is great. I think the Jets are the more balanced roster all around. I love that secondary that they have built with DJ Reed and Sauce Gardner. I love this defensive line. John Franklin Myers and Quinnen Williams and all the pieces that they have added. I think the Jets are doing it. I've got them headed to the AFC Championship game. And now we get to talk about the Cincinnati Bengals, who they went out and they added Orlando Brown Jr. to this offensive line, which was a weak point of theirs. I'm going to be very curious to see what happens with Lyle Collins. Um, Is he going to come back and play? Are they going to move Jonah Williams to right tackle? Because I think Jonah Williams is a better tackle at this point. He should be playing right tackle. And for a Jaguars team that hasn't been able to generate pass rush, it's a good matchup. For the Bengals. I think the secondary in Jacksonville. It's a good secondary. I love Tyson Campbell. I like some of their safeties. Is this an elite secondary? No. And I don't think we talk about this Jets. Or the excuse me. This Bengals defense enough. They're able to generate pressure. With DJ Rear and BJ Hill. Trey Hendrickson. Sam Hubbard. And now Miles Murphy on that defensive line. That's scary. They've got an insanely good linebacking core. The safeties are the only real area of concern with me. On this Bengals defense. I think their secondary is really solid. And I think Cam Taylor Britt's in for a massive year. As much as I like Trevor Lawrence, I think it's going to be the second straight year they go out in the divisional round. I just don't think they have the ma- uh, matchups that can guard Jamar Chase, T. Higgins, and Tyler Boyd for four straight quarters. 
And Joe Burrow is absolutely incredible. And I've got uh, the Bengals headed to the AFC Championship. Then we have the... This is going to be a very interesting divisional round if it plays out this way in the NFC. We've got the Seahawks and the Lions. Two of my favorite rosters, probably in the league right now. I really like what the Seahawks did in the draft and really boosted this defense. You added a veteran leader like Bobby Wagner and Devon Witherspoon to a loaded secondary. But I really, really like this Lions offensive line, this Lions front. I think they're going to be able to run the football this year with David Montgomery and Jameer Gibbs. I think that's a really fun duo. And this game would be everything a football fan would want because I think this would be a super high-scoring affair. But who do I give the edge to? I haven't mapped this out. I know where I was going to go in the AFC. The NFC, I'm kind of going, um, doing it in my head right now. And I really love Seattle. I think I'm going to go with Seattle in this one. I think... It's very, very close. Uh, yeah, I got to go with Seattle here. I think they have the the more weapons on this team, and there are still question marks there with that Detroit defense. I think it's going to be a very close one. I think these games are going to be evenly matched, but I'm going with Seattle. And then we got the 49ers and the Eagles, a rematch of last year's NFC Championship game. And I don't really think this one's too close. Um, well, okay. Let me let me explain. I think that the Eagles are still the better team here. They didn't lose really all that much. You lost Javon Hargrave, coincidentally, to the Niners. Um, you lost C.J. Gardner-Johnson, but they really replenished really well by adding Jalen Carter, who was the best defensive player I think I've ever seen in college. He fell into your laps. You added Nolan Smith. The secondary is a pretty great unit still. And there's question marks there with the 49ers quarterback, the 49ers offensive line. Jalen Hurts is a very good quarterback. I think he is the best dual threat option in the league. They've got a lot of different weapons they could throw out in the running back room. I think the Eagles are the best team in the NFC, and I think they're going to beat the Niners here. I, I don't think it's the Niners year. I know a lot of people love Brock Purdy. I'm not the highest on Brock Purdy still, um, but um, here we are. The uh, AFC and NFC Championship game between the Jets and the Bengals and the Seahawks and the Eagles. Um, let's start off in the NFC here. What are we looking at? Coaching, balanced rosters, quarterbacks, weapons, defenses. I think everything I mentioned other than maybe coaching, you would go with the Eagles. They've got the better, both offensive and defensive lines. They've got the better weapons. They've got the better secondary. I think this one is going to be, it'll be a fun game, but I think the Eagles win this one pretty handily. I think the Eagles are the best team in the NFC. I think they're repeating and they're headed back to the Super Bowl. I've got the Eagles winning the NFC. And then we look at the AFC. Are we going to have the battle of the green here between the Jets and the Bengals? I talked about it. This Bengals defense is very underrated. And on an offensive line, if we look at the Jets matchups, you had Buffalo is a pretty good um, line. You look at the um, who do they play? The Chiefs. It's a good defensive line with Chris Jones is playing. I don't know his status, so I'm not really going to say too much on that. Um, I think this this Bengals defensive line is going to be able to generate a lot of pressure. I think their secondary is going to be very very good, and offensively, this team is very stout. They have so many weapons. While I do love this Jets defense, this could be one of those ugly, low-scoring games, but I, I've been saying it all year. I, I think the Bengals are going to the Super Bowl again. I think Joe Burrow is going to be on an absolute tear trying to bring a championship to the city of Cincinnati, and I think they're going to get it done. They are going to go to Vegas to take on the Philadelphia Eagles. What a matchup this would be. Great offense versus great defense. Um, I mean, both sides have great everything. What do we like? Both of these teams have been the losers in the last two Super Bowls. The Bengals losing to the Rams. The Eagles losing to the Chiefs. So both these teams are out to get revenge. And what are we looking at in this one? Who am I a fan of in this game? And I'm going to say it. I think the Bengals are going to win the Super Bowl. I think Orlando Brown is going to be a massive piece for this team. They needed that dominant left tackle. 
And they went out and they added it in Orlando Brown Jr. I think that's fantastic for them. They have all the weapons that you could possibly imagine. If Irv Smith can be good for this team, this could be insane for them. They have a really, really good secondary with Chidobe Awuzie. You have Cam Taylor Britt. You've got pieces there in the secondary. I think Daxton Hill is going to be great. Depth-wise, I like everything about this team. And, yeah, I'm taking the Bengals to win the Super Bowl this year. I think the Eagles are going to get very close again. They're just going to miss short again. Um, I think the Bengals are the champions this year, and that's really what it is. So, guys, let me know. Who do you guys think is going to win the Super Bowl this year? Who is your playoff picks? Who are your predictions? We'd love to hear your thoughts down below. Uh, that's going to do it for me. Be sure to hit that like button. Subscribe if you are new. And I'll see you guys in the next one.